In this tutorial we're going to focus on the slightly more advanced topic of the application data folder. Now the application data folder is the location on disk where resource files are stored and these are used by the software to populate lists of options or set defaults when it runs. Now because the list is looked at each time the software starts it means it's possible to customize or extend the options by modifying the files in this location. So let's take a look at where the files live first. If we go to the file menu on our software uh, main menu bar here, you can see there's an option at the bottom here to open the application data folder. And this is the best way to find out where the application is looking for these resource files. And when I select that, it will open an explorer window for us in the correct location. Now the precise path um, that you will be using will be variable and it will depend on where you've installed the software, which particular product you're using and potentially even what operating system or version of Windows you're running. So the way to find this path is to use this file menu option. Okay, And then once you're there this will be uh, something that you can, you can then choose. And in particular as we start to modify the contents of this folder this path might well be something you, you would want to consider backing up so that you can recover your own customized data later on uh, or even after an upgrade for example. Okay so let's have a look at the content of this folder. The first one is bitmap textures and we're going to look at this one in a lot of detail towards the end of this tutorial but essentially this contains the images that are used for things like the material block um, um, color shading here when we do a preview of the toolpath and we're going to look at that in detail in a second but inside here you can see that there are various images that represent the different types of material we can color the preview toolpath the preview material block when we're previewing our toolpaths there's uh, also the next one down here is gadgets now gadgets are little automated um, scripts that you can install um, to, to, to run to do certain jobs um, with the software. Now these are available from the Vectric website. They're actually available from the support site. So if you go to support.vectric.com on your web browser, this is just a simple web browser, this will take you to the support website for Vectric. And amongst the other useful bits of information here, there's a section here on gadgets. And the gadgets will take you to um, available gadgets for doing very specific jobs. So they tend to be things that aren't core features of the software, but they might be useful enough that a number of people want to automate a particular process and in that case a gadget can be made that you can install and it will extend the uh, functioning of your software. Uh, the gadgets are available from the menu at the top here so the various gadgets that are available uh, will appear in this menu. So those gadgets are located in the data folder in this gadget section uh, but you should follow the instructions for installing them um, from the website. Underneath that is the post P folder this contains all the post processors and this, these are the files that create the list when you come to save your toolpath of available post processors. So this is where um, you need to add any custom post processors you might have made or this is where you will come to modify an existing post processor if you need to. Now more details on post processor modification is, is available um, from the help files. Um, but remember once you've started to modify posts you do need to, to keep the ones that you've created and back them up. The tool database contains the main default tool database which will appear when you are using the software and this is the file that will be modified every time you modify the tool database in the software. So effectively this is the archive of all the changes you make to the tool database and it's the file that you need to back up if you want to keep your own custom tool database and move it between versions of the software. Similarly, in fact, all three of the last folders here are places where the software itself will store changes. So they're not things that you will modify manually, but they are things that you might want to back up or keep copies of if you start to get used to the defaults or that you've uh, created uh, your own custom versions of things. So the first is the tool database. The second is the toolpath defaults. Again, these are files that are created by the software, but essentially they keep the default values that you last used for a particular toolpath strategy. And if you are in the habit of using very, very similar settings each time, um, then you might want to keep copies of these defaults uh, and use them um, in future versions of the software as well. And similarly, Vector Textures is the place where if you do 2.5D textured toolpaths, if your software is capable of the 2.5D textured toolpath strategy, then um, this is where the stored uh, files are that you can keep for particular procedural textures that you've created. So again, this is where to look for anything that you've saved via the um, 
toolpath texturing strategy and it's the place that you need to back up uh, if you started to create a good collection of those. So that's essentially the structure of the program data or the application data folder. The next thing I want to focus on is how we might go ahead and modify some of the content uh, of these folders ourselves. As I say, really, this is the sort of thing you're probably only going to want to modify some of these textures and possibly your post processors directly. Everything else is uh, actually created from within the software, and that's by far the, the best or, or indeed the only way to modify the contents of those folders. But let's look at the bitmap textures folder. Inside here, you can see that we've got numbered folders one to four and after the number and an underscore is the name of the folder okay so the numbering is forcing a particular order of the folders so by putting one in here we force wood to come to the top of our list so the numbering system is allowing us to set the order that the folders appear in explorer and indeed we'll see in a second the order that they appear in our software so let's take a look inside one underscore wood and here we can see the images we glanced at earlier in this um, demonstration. Let's look at the names of the first few, Beach Dark, Beach Light, Birch. You'll see these are all JPEG files, which is a standard uh, image format uh, in Windows. Uh, so Beach Dark, Beach Light, Birch, Calvados okay, are the first few files in this folder. So let's uh, now close this down and take a look at the preview toolpaths um, form. So preview toolpaths is the stage you get to just before you start to uh, simulate the cutting process of your toolpaths to preview the surface finish that they're generating. And as hopefully you're aware, you can set the material block into which you do your simulation um, using a lot of different parameters to give you a really good visualization of what the final piece will look like in reality. Uh, and this list here gives you many options for different types of wood. But hopefully you'll notice now that in fact it's categorized. So the first level that we see after solid color, which is a special entry, which we're not going to, um, we're going to ignore for the moment. Uh, underneath that are, is a wood category with a series of wood images, metal with a series of metal types and stone. Now, hopefully you'll remember that these miscellaneous at the bottom here, these match the folders, the subfolders that we saw inside the um, application data folder bitmap textures so you can see that what the software's done is it's it's looked through those that folder on startup it's removed the numbers because the numbers are there simply to set the order and it's just used the name that follows the the number and the underscore in this case wood then it's gone inside the wood folder and it's populated the wood list beach dark Beach Light, Birch, Calvados hopefully you'll remember that those were simply the names of the JPEG image files that were in that folder so this is a really cool system because it means that we can modify the contents of that folder and it will be reflected next time we start the software in the list of available materials uh, in our preview toolpaths list. So let's have a go at that. I'm going to choose um, the dark wood option here. And the reason I've chosen that is it's got a strong, bold um, grain. And the grain is in the horizontal direction. Now for some designs, that might not be suitable. We might want to have the grain in a vertical direction. So let's have a look at how we might modify our um, application data folder in order to add a vertical version of the grained dark wood. Okay, so I'm going to go to the file menu, open the application data folder, and in the application data folder is the bitmap textures we looked at earlier on. Wood is the group that we're interested in. And here is the dark wood image that we're actually currently using uh, to create our material block. So I'm just going to use the standard Windows options here to make a copy of this folder, this file. So right click and copy, and then I can do right click and paste and that creates my dark wood copy. I'm going to rename that, so I can rename that, um, just use, just renaming the file here. So instead of copy, we're going to call this one brackets vertical. Okay, and this is gonna have the vertical grain. So having changed the name, let's actually make it vertical now. And I can do that by using the standard uh, photo viewer that's inside Windows. And the, the photo viewer allows you to rotate uh, photos because it's to uh, to assist you with camera shots that have been taken where the camera's been turned on its side. So let's just use one of the rotation options here to give us our uh, vertical grain and when I close that we'll see that updated in the folder. So what we've done here is we've taken a copy of an existing file, renamed it and 
turned it round so that the grain is now vertical. That's all we need to do in the data folder if I close this down. Now unfortunately as I mentioned before the application data files are really only loaded typically when the application starts. So initially our new file is not in this list. Uh, so we do need to go and and close down the software first. I'm not going to save my file in this case. And then I'm going to restart the software. And when it restarts, it will have re-read the contents of our application data folder such that when I can create a new file now, so I'm just creating a simple file moving across the toolpaths. Let's go to the preview. Okay, so this was our dark wood. It's actually set it finest for us automatically. So dark wood, horizontal, and here in our list now is the new dark wood vertical that matches the file we've just added. So we've modified a file, but you can, of course, add your own files in there. Um, and the same goes really for the post processors um, and some of the other files, which will be the locations that are saved uh, by the software when, it's, when modifications are made to its own internal data structures. So hopefully you can see the application data folder is, uh, is a really useful way of extending or customizing the existing options in the software and you should also be aware of its location if you want to add it to your backup schedule. Uh, but essentially everything you need really uh, to know is, is found in this folder. Okay, hopefully this was a useful tutorial.